just for me, just for me. This is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is filled with his goodness. He is holy. He is high. He is set apart. So we sing to him. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We'll be getting started. It's probably around 610, 615, but we do want to just again ask the persons who might concentrate on prayer at this time. Amen.
When the gospel is the gospel, it's not some word that we make up. It's the same everywhere. And everywhere the Lord gives me opportunity to go, I hear the same voice. He's calling us higher. He's requiring something of us. I believe the Lord has all the, of the body in Christ everywhere, worldwide, in school to learn what we will do when we go to that place called heaven. And he's calling us higher. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm tired of a little dab of dude that I'm, I'm familiar with. Listen to this. It's an old song. Zion is calling me to a higher place of praise. You sing. To stand upon the mountain and to magnify his name. Every nation that he reigns. I can hear him. Oh, I hear him calling Zion. Calling us higher. To a higher place. Let's sing it again. Zion, Zion, Zion. It's calling me. To a higher place. Zion, we'll worship you and we'll praise you. We honor you for your fragrance and your glory and your strength. Here in Zion, we'll raise our banners and we'll bless you and we'll honor you. Glory to Jesus. Here in Zion. My God. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. to him tonight. Come on, call his name tonight. Jesus. Jesus. Yes, God.
Amen, 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 church family, amen, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. Good morning, Ebenezer, good morning, good morning. I pray that you have spent some time on your knees this morning or at least sitting in your seat uh, in prayer. Um, this is not a commercial. I don't get endorsed in any way by you version, but you version this morning for those of you all who have that app, it talks about the power of prayer. And if we go to God in prayer, he will answer our prayers. But he's only going to answer the prayers of those things, too, that you ask for and you request for that you need. I want to be clear on that, that you need. Yeah, we have wishes, we have desires, we have thoughts. But he's going to answer the prayers when you ask him for what you need, and he will provide for you. So, again, pastors requested, specifically on this week, um, that we might come into the sanctuary and that we might set this aside this week, that we might come in here and yes, we wanna be in fellowship, we wanna be pleased with seeing one another. It's exciting to see people early in the morning and know that they're gonna get the same blessing that you're gonna get. But we also wanna be, I'm gonna say obedient to what our pastor has asked for. And that's my word, I'm using that. That's not pastor's word, that's my word. When the Lord gave me my uh, ministry, it was around brothers specifically, because I needed to check myself. And so he gave me a ministry of obedience and trying to stay on a straight and narrow path and to listen to those things that he provides to me, but also through our leadership and headship that we might also take that seriously. So let's take the time for prayer seriously. Amen. And somebody might not appreciate that, but that's what we've been asked to do, is that when we come into the sanctuary, if you want a fellowship, go into North X and, and fellowship. But Amen. this right here is sacred this week. Amen. If no other time, it's sacred this week. Amen. Amen. So let's spend time at the altar. Let's spend time at our seats. And again, I want you to go out to you version, not a commercial, not an endorsement. Don't get a dime. But I've been using that. Brother Steve Young turned us on to that probably 20 years ago. And I've been on you version for about 20 years. And each and every morning I start my day with scripture. And it always is relevant to what it is that the Lord has for me for the day. So start your day. Thank the Lord for waking you up in the morning. Praise him for giving you another day because this is the day that the Lord has made. We all should rejoice and be glad in it. And then grab your scripture and see what the Lord has for you. Let it be the foundation that sets the pace of your day. Now let's go into a word of prayer. Amen. Amen. Father God, how grateful we are for the scripture, for the word, for the foundation of what our days look like, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, how you communicate with us through the word. But greater than that, Lord God, you've given us this gift called prayer. And so with that, Lord God, we pray to you right now that you will be in the midst of all the things, Lord, that we see and experience on today, Lord God. We thank you for our pastor who thinks in our robbery, Lord God, to each and every morning this week to bring forward to us what it is, Lord God, that you placed on his heart to share. And as we're going through the book of John this year, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for the revelation that we're being able to see. And yes, we all know how the story ends, Lord God, but to walk the path and the description, Lord God, that we experienced on yesterday, to be able to see it for ourselves, those things, Lord God, that you had your son to go through on our behalf, we should be grateful. And on today, Lord God, we just enter into this house with the spirit of gratitude, and we just say thank you, Lord God. I ask right now, Lord God, that again, you'll bless our pastors, Lord God, with whatever they stand in need of, Lord God, that they might continue to do the work that you've called them to do, that they might be able to keep their hands on the plow of ministry, and that they might be able to bring forth and bear fruit, Lord God, in this house today. That there might even be somebody under the sound of my voice, Lord God, that has made a misstep in some way, fashion, form, or another, and now today they want to 
be right, do right. Get on a straight and narrow path, Lord God, because they still do have time. And for that, Lord God, we're grateful. So on today, Lord God, we celebrate you for what you're going to do in this house on today. We look forward to the word that shall come forward. And again, Lord God, bless these, your people, for their obedience and coming into the sanctuary, Lord God, to be able to hear from you what it is that you've had set aside for them on today. It's in Jesus' matchless name we pray that all of us say amen, amen, and amen. <clears throat> Sister Petty, you got a scripture for us? It's my ace right here. It's glad to see her come back this week. Thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning. It's good seeing you this morning, each and every one of you. If you could read with me uh, James, the first chapter, beginning at verse 2. We'll read verses 2 through 8. Dear brothers, is your life full of difficulties and temptations? Then be happy, for when the way is rough, your patience has a chance to grow. So let it grow, and don't try to squirm out of your problems. For when your patience is fully in full bloom, then you will be ready for anything, strong in character, full and complete. If you want to know what God wants you to do, ask him, and he will gladly tell you. For he is always ready to give a bountiful supply of wisdom to all who ask him. He will not resent it. But when you ask him, be sure that you are really expect him to tell you. For a doubtful mind will be as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. And every decision you then make will be uncertain as you turn first this way and then that. If you don't ask with faith, don't expect the Lord to give you any solid answer. God bless the reading of his word. A timely prayer. Let's stand on our feet. Again, let's stay on our feet for pastor. Let's welcome him at this time. We give the Lord's name, the honor, the praise, and the glory. We thank God for all that he continues to do. Can you give uh, Pastor Joanne a hand praise in the midst of our woman's season? We thank God for the great work and ministry. Every woman can give the Lord's name a hallelujah because this is going to be a great time in Jesus' name. And brothers, we can shout back hallelujah as well. And so again, praise the Lord. Can you give Minister Ralph Miller a hand praise for leading our devotions on today? Thanks so many for coming out. Reverend Chandra Merritt on our ministerial staff, Reverend Oliver on our ministerial staff. We just want to thank God for today. And then we're so blessed to have Reverend Devin Martin here on this morning. He was the former chief of police in C. Pleasant, Maryland. He is now the chief of staff for our uh, county uh, representative on the con Prince George's County Council, Edward Burroughs III, and he is also an ordained minister in the African Methodist Episcopal Church. So, so honored and blessed and an anointed young man. Thank you, Ministry of Helps, for all that you do, Brother Crumley and Brother Brown. Can you give our minister, can you give the multimedia ministry a hand praise? Thank you for, so blessed to see you, Felicia. God bless you. Felicia had an accident at school and just getting back from Denver with the YPD. Is Sister Mason here today? Can you give Sister Mason a hand praise? It does such a phenomenal job with our YPD just getting back from uh, Denver, Colorado, and we say thank the Lord. You may take your seats in Jesus' name, and again, thank the Lord for Brother and Sister Clay for all of the persons who make this morning possible. Everybody who is, this is your, you have not missed an early morning service this year. Can you jump to your feet and give the Lord's name the praise? Amen. Amen. And if this is your first time, if you'd be so kind to jump to your feet, if this is your first time, praise the Lord. I'm so blessed to have you this morning. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you today. Uh, let's go to God in a word of prayer. Uh, did I recognize Sister Petty for reading the scripture? Thank you, Sister Petty, for reading the scripture. We were blessed to go to her mother's homegoing service. 
in Andrews, South Carolina. She was like the Rosa Parks of that community. And so we thank the Lord for the great legacy that uh, Sister Petty comes from. Eternal God, our Father, we come in the name of Jesus, first of all, to say thank you for this triumphant Tuesday. We're believing that you're going to work all things together for good. We thank you for the men and women both here and watching our streaming, who we're believing that the power of the Holy Spirit shall be manifest in a marvelous and in a mighty way. So, Lord, Lord, on this day, we thank you for signs, wonders, and miracles. Bless us as we move towards Resurrection Sunday and the glory that's about to care, occur. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. If be so kind, we're going to be starting for a quick review uh, this morning. Uh, uh, we're going to be asking, be so kind to turn back with us to uh, John, the 12th chapter, beginning at the 20th verse. And I neglected to emphasize that on yesterday, John, the 12th chapter and the 20th verse. And can you look at somebody and tell them, truth crust to the earth will rise again. And say it like you mean it. Truth, crust to the earth, shall rise again. And you can look at the neighbors. I'll be awake. I'll be woke in a few moments. <laughs> can you give Reverend Vernon Ware a hand praise? So blessed to see. He has gotten comfortable sitting under the light now. So he <laughs> gives the Lord's name to praise. Uh, in chapter number 12, verse number 20, it begins by saying, Some Greeks who had come to Jerusalem for the Passover celebration paid a visit to Philip who was from Bethesda in Galilee. In other words, he was Greek, uh, had a Greek background himself. They said, sir, we want to meet Jesus. Philip then told Andrew about it, and they went together to ask Jesus. And Jesus' reply in verse 23, now the time has come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory. So once Jesus heard that the Gentiles, that the Greeks were interested in what was happening, and this is right after um, Palm Sunday, uh, that this was his indication that his time was now come. It was time now for him to come to begin the move towards the cross, because again, we're always at the shadow of the cross, and that it was time because it was more than just Jews that were now interested in the ministry of Jesus. It was now the Greeks. And it have to be interesting because remember, remember when we talked about the Maccabeans? Can you raise your hand? Amen. Just doing all these kinds of things. I was a former teacher, so I hope you get awake. This is, look at someone, this is first period. <laughs> Amen. And so, uh, if you remember with the Maccabeans, it was the Greeks that they were fighting against. It was Greek culture they were fighting against. Greek culture had got into Jewish culture so much so that the elites of the Jewish culture were abandoning their Jewish culture and adopting Greek culture. And with that, Syria, who was also at this time uh, embracing Greek culture, had introduced Greek culture even to the temple itself and had banned all Jewish religion's customs. So no circumcision. Matter of fact, if we shared with you before uh, that if a mother had the child circumcised, the mother would be crucified as then the child would be hung around the mother's neck on the cross. It was a case by which they actually were slaughtering pigs in the uh, temple, which could not have been a great abomination. Can you give our ushers a hand, praise? Ushers, I apologize, not thanking you. Amen. Which could not be a greater abomination to the Jews. So the Maccabeans, and it was just five men who did guerrilla warfare uh, that came and attacked the Syrians, recaptured the temple for the glory and honor of God. And so this Maccabean revolution was what had Rome and the religious leaders on edge because the fear was that a revolutionary would be coming and coming as a Messiah to bring about the kingdom of God back in the midst of the oppression that the Jewish people were under. So it's always very important for all of us, especially for black Americans, to realize that Jesus is operating under a system of oppression in which the rights and the privileges that the Jewish people wanted to have, the Roman government was oppressing them. And so Jesus was growing up in a very revolutionary time. And so when he was calling himself the Messiah, it's always important for us to remember, it is not the Jesus that we know today. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is when he was being called the Messiah, he was called the Messiah from the Old Testament tradition that a Messiah would come in the tradition of King David, overcome the 
uh, oppressors of the Jewish people in a violent war in which from that war the Jewish people would be successful and therefore capture the glory of God as they had under King David. So we're talking about a revolution. Can you put your hand up in the air like you just don't care and tell them the revolution will not be televised? <laughs> Talk to us, Gil Scott Heron. It's winter in Jerusalem. Amen? And so this is the background why there was such concern. That was, so it's interesting in chapter 12, verse number 20, that the same Greek culture that was influencing Jewish culture, that Greek culture is now wanting to come to Jesus. Does everyone see the irony there? And so with this, Jesus say, my time has now come. And this sense of reconciliation, this sense of all of us coming together, this sense of kumbaya, <laughs> this sense of us loving our brothers is still alive with us today. Today, March 26, 1964, was when Martin Luther King and Malcolm X met for the very first time. It was a chance meeting. Richard Russell, Senator Richard Russell from uh, Georgia, uh, Reverend Martin was uh, the chief opponent to this 1964 civil rights bill. This is the same Richard Russell who the Russell building is named after uh, that the congressmen have their offices in. It's interesting during the time of George Floyd when we were changing all the schools and all the streets, none of the congressmen ever talked about changing Richard Russell's building. He was the most, can you put that picture back up, uh, Melton Media, thank you. He was probably the most racist, uh, obstructionist to the civil rights movement of anybody in Congress. And they named the Russell Building where all of the congressmen's offices are now and no one ever talked about that being changed. I'm sharing that because in 1964 was the beginning of a shift. Dr. King, because of his frustration with the slow pace of the civil rights movement was becoming far more militant. And those of you who saw the movie Malcolm X or any, know anything about Max, Malcolm X know that once he went to Mecca, he was becoming more conciliatory. And we thank the Lord for his wife, Betty Chavez, uh, that Pastor Joanne was actually in a workshop uh, with in New York City uh, before her death was the one that wanted to make sure through the movie by Spike Lee that people understood on Malcolm X as he was moving towards this um, kind of shift. Those of us who grew up at that time, there is no way that America could ever have a stamp for Malcolm X. <laughs> it would be like in our generation, 30 years from now, there's a stamp for Minister Farrakhan. It's just, it was just, in, and when Bill Clinton was inaugurated president, and we thank the Lord, Reverend Donald Vales and Ebenezer was front and center working with uh, Quincy Jones. Anybody here was at the inaugural with the choir? Praise the Lord. And praise the Lord. Amen. So uh, Ebenezer's choir was the featured choir for uh, President Clinton's inauguration in which Quincy Jones was the musical leader. And Michael Jackson was a part of the whole putting that together as well. And on one side of President Clinton was Dr. King's daughter. On the other side was Malcolm X's daughter. That was, that, in 1964, there is no way a president of the United States would be holding the hand. But this sense of trying to come together, we at Ebenezer are proud that I believe we're the only church in America that's ever had Minister Farrakhan. He, we were the church that was designated for the 10th anniversary of the Million Man March. And we had 600 of our Muslim brothers and sisters here at Ebenezer with the Christian community. And Minister Farrakhan spoke, and he spoke from a position of pain and talked about his own life in which his mother should have aborted him because she had a, he was born with the, another man who was not his mother's uh, husband. And the man uh, that she, uh, that Minister Farrakhan's father was, was light-skinned and her husband was dark-skinned. So she knew that when the son was born, she was gonna be in trouble and she tried to abort him three times and it didn't work. And so his sermon was related around how God can turn pain into power. 
and it's still available if you go on the Nation of Islam website, you're still available because the, my mother, our brothers from the Nation of Islam still talk about that they felt that that was one of Minister Farrakhan's finest hours. But we were the only church that's had Minister Farrakhan, Bishop Tutu, Mrs. Coretta Scott King, as well as Reverend Jesse Jackson and T.D. Jakes to all come to the same church. The only church that we know that Malcolm X and Dr. King spoke from was from Brown AME Church in uh, Selma, Alabama. If you saw the movie Selma, you saw him interacting with uh, Mrs. King. Look at someone, he's going somewhere in a second. <laughs> Who said, hold on? <laughs> Come on. Praise the Lord. Please raise your hand. You have been faithful over a few things and God's getting ready to make you ruler over many. Virtually every Sunday, you're the first one to have a heave <laughs> offering. And last Sunday, somebody beat you just on, on, on a matter of pee. <laughs> but God is telling you, your faithfulness has not been in vain. Also, God is sharing uh, that uh, your truth of what you stand on in Christ, don't, don't slip, don't fall back because that truth is going to rise again. Amen. And you have been praying now for, whew, I guess, 10 years, believe in God. And that is, you said it, God's confirming it. Hold on. Amen. A little while longer, these heavy burdens will soon be passing over. Run the race, keep the faith, and in God's own time, your change is going to come. Can you look at somebody and say, truth crushed to the earth will rise again? And hold on. Anybody gotten Minister Dillard's latest CD? Hold on a little while longer. These heavy burdens will soon be passing over. My brothers who are, my, all the ushers, my goodness, uh, all four ushers who are sitting right in those two back rows, please be so kind to come down. Can you give, can you give our ushers a hand praise this morning? Hold on a little while longer. These heavy burdens will soon be passing over. Run the race. Can you look at somebody and tell them, keep the faith. Keep the faith. Say it like you mean it. Keep somebody here today. That's why the ushers are coming down. If you can take each other by the hand. All four of you need to keep the faith. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. My sister, you are the one that looks like the son of God. So I'm going to ask that you look at my sister right here since this is a woman's history month. You need to know that God's got you in whatever furnace you're now in. And all four of you are in some kind of furnace. All four of you are going through some kind of challenge. You came today out of your dedication and commitment to ushers. But God brought you here because he wants you to know if you keep the faith for your child, for your grandchild, for your situation, for your job, for your finances, and for one of you is for your health for someone else's, for your spouse's health. I'm going to ask that you to raise your hands in the name of Jesus. Look at, keep each other's hand and look at your neighbor to the left or to your right and say, God's working it out. God's working it out. God's working it out. God's working it out. In the name of Jesus, we want to say thank you. God is working it out. In Jesus' name, we want to say thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Can you give a neighbor a holy high five and tell him Jesus is working it out? Say it like you mean it to that neighbor. Jesus is working it out in the name of Jesus. He's ushering in a new dispensation for you this morning in the name of Jesus. And if you believe it in Jesus' name, it's all right. Can you look at somebody and tell me, I feel him ushering it in. What I came for this morning, he's ushering in. My sister in the bright colored uh, shirt, I guess pink, please come on down. Yes, uh-huh. Can you give our sister a hand praise? Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Why did you call me out today, Pastor? If I had known, I would have dressed up. <laughs> but you can't dress up more than you are dressed up today. Please raise your hands in Jesus' name. God dress you today. God wants you to know the pink that you have on is soon going to become a bright red because he's got you covered by the blood. And that no weapon formed against you is going to prosper you, in Jesus. the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And by his stripes, you are healed today in Jesus' name. Chad, please come on down. 
My two sisters right here be so kind to come on down in the name of Jesus. Can you give Chad a hand praise? He works with security. He's here to serve. But right now, Chad, God is getting ready to serve you. He's getting ready to do exceedingly and abundantly beyond what you ever could think or imagine. You have been wanting to be called out. But you were assuming because you were here working that that was not going to happen. But God has flipped the script and wants you to know he's seen your faithfulness, but more importantly, he's seen your faith. And on today, God is working all things together for good in the name of Jesus. My sisters, please come. We have seen how faithful you have been with your mother. Please take each other. But your, your sisters, right? Yes. yes. We have seen how faithful you have been. Your mother's the uh, praise, what is your mother's name? I apologize. Lene. Lene. Uh, last name? Pinkney. Sister Pinkney worked for the Prince George. Sister Pinkney worked for the D.C. Uh, police force. She was injured and shot in the line of duty. She has never been fully compensated by the fact that she has now been in a wheelchair for how long? 28 years. 28 years. And these precious daughters have been the one that have brought her to church now for about how long? 26 years. And you may remember, sister, it's been the one in the wheelchair to the side. She was a distinguished police officer in, in uh, Washington, D.C. And these precious daughters have kept their mother grounded in going to church. And we give the Lord's name the praise. And because of your faithfulness in the name of Jesus, God wants you to know that what you are believing God for, not just for your mother, but for yourselves, is coming to pass. If you believe it's coming to pass today, can you give the Lord's name the praise? My brother, please come right down. Hallelujah. You too have been faithful. You're looking like a prophet today. That beard, the whole nine yards. Hallelujah. We always have to remember uh, President Obama is not a prophet. He was a president. We always have to remember the reason I had Malcolm and Martin on, uh, they were prophets. Politicians are not prophets. They are not speaking truth to power because they are power. We always have to remember, prophets are not perfect. So then the social media time is very easy to dismiss prophets because we find out so much about their personal lives, but their propheticness is not based on what they do, it's what God is telling them. Amen. Amen. Politicians are politicians. They are not prophets. They put their finger to the air and see which way the wind is blowing. Prophets say, what thus saith the Lord. My brother, please raise your hand. God has called you to be a prophet. Something is getting ready to take place with you in the next year that you have not quite sure what's going on, but you know something is going on in your life. And you have been faithful coming to this early morning services because you know God is using you and getting ready to use you even to a greater extent. And God's going to use you to speak truth to power in a ministry that's going to help change this world. Can you give our brother a hand praise this morning in the name of Jesus? And if you know God has a blessing with your name on it, it's all right to say amen. amen. So the Greeks are now coming to Jesus, and Jesus says, it's now time. It's now my time. God bless you, my brother. Can you look at somebody and say, it's now my time? Amen. And somebody here this morning, you know it, you sense it. Uh, Sister Petty, come on up. It's interesting, sometimes the death of a loved one ushers in a new understanding of what God wants us to do. Sister Petty has been faithful, uh, not only as a, in the Sunday school, but also working with the ushers. Virtually everything Sister Petty has done in the last 10 or 12 years has been behind the scenes. She was a visible leader in the early years of the church, but recently she has used that same level of spirituality and expertise to empower others and push others on to do what they need to do. But every organization that Sister Petty has been a part of, whether it be new members, ushers, a Sunday school, has been the, one of the best organized ministries in the life of the church. Wow. And at the, at the funeral of your mother, even though you're at the senior stage of life, God is getting ready to take you to another place. We thank the Lord for her being a caregiver for her beloved husband, John. I'm so blessed to see John at the funeral. And her son, Scott, who is now a minister, Baptist preacher, we want to thank the Lord. He did a phenomenal eulogy to his grandmother. God is doing something through you and in you. And those of us who heard you read the scripture this morning heard it. 
and you know it, you don't quite understand what's happening, but this anointing today is for you to receive what God is getting ready to do. Everyone who's had someone in your family to die, a mother or a father, someone in your immediate family who has died in the last four year, five years, please stand. If you've had someone in your, my God, if you've had someone in your immediate family to, my goodness, whew, okay, all right, my goodness, whoo, <laughs> my goodness, whoo, God said to anoint everyone who's standing. I didn't realize there'd be that many people. If you are standing, please make your way to the altar. <laughs> Good gracious. My goodness, wow. Can you give all those who are coming today a hand praise? My goodness. Wow. Hmm? All right, thank you. If you could please face the altar this way. For all of you, uh, hopefully everybody can be uh, up in one line. Pastor Joanne's going to start on the other side. Thank you, sweetheart. Uh, please stand at the altar and raise your hands. My goodness, my goodness. If, uh, if you're not catching, please try and squeeze in at the altar. We hopefully we can do all of this in one, one time. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Uh, if some of the catchers can go with Pastor Joanne on the other side, thank you so very, very much. For all of you, as you have your hand raised, during the home going of the one that you love, God has done something for you and with you in these last five years. Even though there was pain, even though there was sorrow, God did something through you and in you during that time that has elevated your faith. And because your faith has been elevated, you need to know today, if you remain faithful to what God is calling and having you to do, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and your mind can't comprehend what God is getting ready to have you to be and to do. So this anointing today is to have you move from grief, have you move from pain to power. And God's getting ready to do something extraordinary in your lives. And if you believe it, you can holler back amen and amen and amen. In other words, amen means let it be so. In the name of Jesus, we claim it so. In the name of Jesus, we claim it so. In the name of Jesus, we claim it so. In the name of Jesus, we claim it so. In the name of Jesus, we claim it so. In the name of Jesus, we claim it so. In the name of Jesus, we claim it so. In the name of Jesus, we claim it so. In the name of Jesus, from the top of your head, to the sole of your feet. God is lifting the grief from you. He's lifting the grief and allowing you to see him. And through him, God's giving you power. In the name of Jesus, we claim it to be so. In the name of Jesus, we claim it to be so. In the name of Jesus, we claim it to be so. In the name of Jesus, we claim it to be so. In the name of Jesus, we claim it to be so. In the name of Jesus, we claim it to be so. In the name of Jesus, we claim it to be so. In the name of Jesus, we claim it to be so. In the name of Jesus, we claim it to be so. In the name of Jesus, we claim it to be so. In the name of Jesus, we claim it to be so. In the name of Jesus, we claim it to be so. In the name of of Jesus, we claim it to be so. In the name of Jesus, uh, Mother Hammond, as soon as you want to speak up, right back up. In the name of Jesus, we claim it to be so. And for the second anointing, in the name of Jesus, we claim it to be so. Can we give the Lord's name the other and the praise and the glory? Amen, amen, and amen. Those of you who are catching it, be so kind to help persons get up off their feet. Thank you so much. We don't want them on the, on the ground for two. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I apologize. I didn't realize. Everybody was unable to make it to the altar. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you have not, if you meant to come to the altar, please come at this time. Amen. And please raise your hand in Jesus' name. God's going to turn your pain into power. In the name of Jesus, we claim it to be so. In the name of Jesus, we claim it to be so. In the name of Jesus, we claim it to be so. In the name of Jesus, we claim it to be so. In the name of Jesus, we claim it to be so. In the name of Jesus, we claim it to be so. In the name of Jesus, we claim it to be so. In the name of Jesus, we claim it to be so. In the name of Jesus, we claim it to be so. In the name of Jesus, we claim it to be so. In the name of Jesus, we claim it to be so. In the name of Jesus, we claim it to be so. In the name of Jesus, we claim it to be so. And in the name of Jesus, we claim it to be so. Can we give the Lord's name all the honor, the praise, and the glory? Amen. We're believing for all of the people that God has just anointed. God's turning your pain into power in Jesus' name. And if you believe it for yourself, can we give the Lord's name the honor, the praise, and the glory? If anybody needs to come up, please come up right now because this is going to be our last one. In the name of Jesus, we want to say thank you that we're turning pain into power in Jesus' name. If you believe it for yourself, it's all right to give the Lord's name all the honor, all the praise, and all of the glory. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Ketchers. Praise the Lord. Can you give our brother who's been an usher faithfully? God bless you. God bless you this morning. God bless you. Nothing has stopped him from being an usher. <laughs> I said nothing has stopped him from being an usher today. God bless you today. God bless you. God bless you. Everybody that was anointed, please jump to your feet. Can you give the Lord's name the honor, the praise, and the glory? Thank you, Brother Wilson. There's going to be a shift in your life between now and Easter. And if you believe it for yourself, can you give the Lord's name the praise? You have been faithful coming to these early morning services. And if you're standing near somebody who's also standing, can you give them a holy high five and say, the shift is coming. God is turning my grief, my pain into power. And God's going to open my eyes and I'll no longer be looking at what I've had to go through, but what God is getting ready to take me to. I said, you're no longer going to be focusing on what you have gone through. You're now going to be focusing in on what God is taking you to. You're no longer going to be focusing on what you have been through. You're now going to be focusing on what God is taking you to. Your future is going to be greater than the past and the legacy the legacy that you are now walking in, God's going to ex ex enlarge your territory so that your tears will not be the only memorial to that loved one, but those tears will be rooted and watering of faith that will allow you to go higher and further. And if you believe that for yourself, can you give the Lord's name the honor, the praise, and the glory today? And if you are sitting near or beside someone who's standing, give them a holy hug and tell them, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready, get ready. This is your season of elevation. Get ready. This is your season of power in the name of Jesus. And we give the Lord's name the praise. I'm going to ask that you follow along with me because there are some scriptures that before we get to chapter number 18 that I want you to make sure that you note uh, because these are scriptures that will be able to give you strength in the midst of all that you're going through. First looking at chapter number 13. Chapter number 13, we're going to be asking that you focus in on uh, verse number uh, 38. Chapter number 13, verses number 38. Uh, I'm sorry, F chapter 14, we're getting back to 38. Uh, chapter 14, let not your heart be troubled. Uh, these are scriptures I'm half praying that you might even commit to memory. When you're going through trouble, your heart does not need to be in trouble because you know that God is going to see you through. Amen? Amen. So 14 verses 1 and 2. And also if you can now move down to uh, verse number, uh, uh, first number 15 of chapter 14. If you love me, obey my commandments, and I will send you, uh, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, another comforter. Amen? And this is not just doing when someone dies, but we say comforter means what? Strength. Remember the Holy Spirit? You're right, the comforter is the Holy Spirit. And he's going to give you what? Strength. What else is he going to be? He's going to be your advocate. He's going to be the one that will stand in your defense and make sure that what you're believing for in God's name. And he will be a comforter, amen, in the time of death. And so we ask that you uh, put that scripture to memory as well. And then if you can move down to verse 27. I'm leaving you with a gift. He didn't leave you land. He didn't leave you money. But he left you a gift to what? Peace of mind and of heart. And I don't know about you, but when you go through trouble, that peace that passes all understanding of mind and heart, do I have a witness in the house that sometimes that's more valuable than any money can be. And then he goes on in verse number 27 to say, so don't be troubled or be afraid. I thought somebody would give the Lord's name, the honor, the praise, and the glory. Chapter 15, verse number 5. Yes, chapter 15, verse number 5. Yes, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Those who remain in me, and I remain in them, will produce much fruit. Amen. Do I have any fruity persons in the house? <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Get ready to bear much fruit. Get ready to bear much power. These are scriptures I'm hoping that you convey and put in your memory. And then moving down to verse number 11 in chapter, uh, fifth, verse number 11 in chapter 15. I told you these things so that you'll be filled with what? Joy. Yes, your joy will be filled and overflow. Can somebody give the Lord's name the praise? Love each other the same way that I have loved you. Moving down to verse 15, I no longer call you slaves because masters don't confide in their slaves. Now that you are, you are my friends, since I've told you everything that the Father has told me. Can you look at someone and say, I'm a, I'm a friend of God. 
I'm no longer a servant. I'm, I, he doesn't treat me as a servant. I'm a friend of God. Can, can you give the Lord's name the praise? I'm a friend of God. He's, we're buddies. Jesus and I are now, yeah, we, we're connected in Jesus' name. And then moving down to verse 16. You didn't choose me, choose me. I chose you and appointed you. Every chosen, hallelujah, fire baptized believer, can you jump to your feet and say, I'm chosen, I'm chosen. I'm chosen. I came out early this morning and I'm watching on streaming to find out what I'm chosen to do and it's going to come to pass. Can you give a neighbor a holy high five in the name of Jesus? You may take your seats in Jesus' name. Chapter number 16 is where Jesus is giving his final talk to the disciples. And during this time, as those who have Bibles know that it's all read. If you look at verse number 23, at that time, talking to the disciples. You won't need to ask me for anything. I tell you the truth. You will ask the Father directly and he will grant you your request because you use my name. I'm just giving you a word of wisdom. When you pray, use the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I claim I'm healed. In the name of Jesus, I claim my children. In the name of Jesus, I'm believing the job. It's not a magical word. It's a word that you believe in that I'm putting my faith my truth in the name of the one that's above all names. Does anybody know what that name is? So when you pray, make sure you use the name of Jesus. It's not magical. It's not something that's just going to come because you use the name. But it gives you a faith foundation. I'm not praying this on my own. I'm not wishing it. I'm not ho I'm believing that in the name of Jesus, what I'm praying for is getting ready to pass. Disciples, Jesus is talking to the disciples, make sure you use my name. And when you use my name, you can go directly to the Father. And the Father, because you're using my name, hallelujah. And God's going to turn your midnights into bright days. <laughs> Amen. So Somebody should say hallelujah. Can you give the Lord's name, the honor, the praise, and the glory? And then finally, chapter 17. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Ron. <laughs> Flashlight. <laughs> Neon light. Everybody needs a light under the sun, under the sun, under the sun. Can you look at somebody and say, the light has come. The light has come. <laughs> It'd be so kind to... Turn with me to chapter number 17. And once again, Jesus in 17, 13. Now I'm coming to you. I've told you many things while I was with you in this world so that you will be filled with joy. Part of what Jesus came is not for you to look sad and down all the time. But even when you're going through, truth crust of the earth will rise again. And the Lord's going to give you joy. Everybody that's got hallelujah joy, despite what you're going through, can you give the Lord's name the praise. Amen. On yesterday, we looked at chapter 18, and we saw that Jesus is now getting ready to go with his disciples, and the Pharisees, the Sadducees, have now uh, come to the Garden of Gethsemane. They have come with Roman soldiers and with temple guards. Judas is leading the charge, and remember, they're thinking that Jesus is a what? Revolutionary. So they're coming to get this one man with about 600 men. Some are Roman soldiers, and some are temple police. And remember, yesterday, they came with what? Weapons. They were expecting an armed conflict, and they were trying to find Jesus. Was Jesus hiding? Yeah. Remember, Jesus came. Uh, Jesus came in, came out in front of them. Who are you looking for? And they said, we're looking for Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said, I am he. Jesus had promised the Father that he was not going to have any of his disciples be lost. Peter got upset, cut off the ear of uh, one of the uh, uh, servants. And then from that, Jesus said, no, because if you continue to do that, they're going to think I'm a revolutionary. But they need to know that my kingdom is not of this world. So therefore, uh, put down your weapons, put down your swords, let them take me in. And so in chapter number 18, we went through so uh, Jesus first going to the high priest's house, uh, Ananias. During this time, when he was at the Ananias' house, what time of the day was it? It was at night, which violated all Jewish laws. There were no trials of a Jewish person within the Sanhedrin court, which is the Jewish council, that should take place at night. So they violated their own laws to it by charging Jesus with crimes at night. Secondly, it had to be done with a crowd uh, with the Sanhedrin court, but Ananias was setting the stage when he went to Ca Caiaphas, who was the high priest, and Ananias was kind of like the high priest emeritus. And so in chapter number 18, Jesus has gone to Ananias. Ananias is trying to get evidence against Jesus. During that same time, Peter has denied Jesus. And in this denial of Jesus, Jesus has told him that once the rooster crows three times, once you have denied me three times, the rooster is going to crow. And then at the end of, not the end, but in chapter number 18, verse number, uh, uh, verse number uh, 27, we see that Onomatopoeia, Peter 
wept bitterly when he heard the rooster crow. Amen? And that was on a man of Peter. When you cry, that is the sound of the word. And so Peter wept bitterly because he had, he had done what he had hoped he would never do, and that was deny Jesus. And we talked about ending yesterday that all of us have denied Jesus. Amen? And we pray, it's not in the denial, but how you feel in the denial that I pray that you've had some automatic appear where you have wept bitterly. And in that weeping, you have gone, oh, oh, and that's automatic appear. When you spell out that word, it's a word that means a sound. And the key thing, David was a man after God's own heart, not because he was perfect, but because he regretted, he repented of the sins that he did. Do I have any repentant sinners in the house? God's grace is going to be upon you. God's grace is, we are the only religion in the world in which grace is a central part. Of, in other words, grace is what all the other religions, Muslims, Buddhists, Hindu, whatever it is, you have to work out. In other words, there's a direct correlation. If you're good, good things will happen to you. If you're bad, bad things will happen. So you're going through all this prayer, you're going through all this whatever, da, 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 da. But anybody here know that we have grace? Yes. And the grace comes from Jesus Christ. You're not getting what you deserve. God's saying by grace is sufficient that I'm giving you what you don't deserve because I love you and because I'm extending this great love to you. I'm hoping that you respond with great love back to me, which means you will be willing to uh, obey my commandments. The grace of God is not for you just to do anything you want to do knowing that you've got grace. Anyone have a loving mama? You did not want to hurt your mama because of her love for you. Amen. You wanted to do something right for your mama. The more she loved you, even though if you messed up, you hurt her, it grieved you in that hurt because you wanted to be doing something that will make your mother proud or you didn't want to. Same thing with Christ. If you mess up, it's a case of all of us are going to mess up and the grace is not simply a license to mess up. Grace is Jesus, I don't know how you do it. I'm unworthy of the blessings I'm getting, but because of the unworthiness, I'm going to serve you better. I'm going to serve you stronger and I'm believing that every day is going to be a little bit sweeter than the day before. Do I have a witness in the house today? So we're now moving to uh, verse number 29 uh, in chapter number 18. Jesus' trial before Caiaphas, he's now left Ananias, ended in the early morning. So all of this, what has gone before, is illegal. Then he was taken to the headquarters of the Roman governor. The headquarters of the Roman government, governor would be like if he was sitting on the pulpit, and this is his headquarters where he would uh, mediate all important charges that may be brought to him. So he's sitting at the headquarters of where... He he, as the Roman uh, a governor, would be able to hear the charges. His name is Pilate. Pilate was a very cruel man. Pilate was a very evil man. The only reason he even got this insignificant position of being overseeing in Judah was the fact that he had married Caesar Augustus' grand granddaughter. So his power came from marriage. He was a very evil man, very insecure man. And so when they brought him, be, Jesus, before him, he, the religious leaders were assuming just because they had brought Jesus before him, he was going to rubber stamp it. So all these questions that we're getting ready to read, the Jewish leader says, what's all this about? We come to you, said we want you to execute this man. We know you're weak. We know that we have power. We know that we can go to Caesar if we want to. Just rubber stamp it. Why we have to go through all these changes, asking all these questions, hoping that you might do what we want to do? I'm a Sadducee. I'm a Pharisee. I have power within the Jewish community. So therefore, you should be doing what we're asking you to do instead of taking us through all these changes. Making sense to anybody? All right. So as, what was that? Praise the Lord. This was Jesus yesterday. <laughs> and you're with him today. Raise your hands. This was Jesus yesterday. And he's with him today. This was Jesus yesterday. And he's with him today. Can you give the Lord's name the honor, the praise, and the glory? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you look at someone and say, I'm with him too. I'm with him too. I'm with him too. I'm with him too. And so uh, they would not go into this headquarters because they did not want to defile themselves because a Jew could not go into Gentile space without being defiled. Here they're getting ready to kill Jesus and they're worried about defiling themselves going into Gentile spaces. Can you look at someone and say, I see the irony. <laughs> they're going to Pilate to murder someone, Rain, and they don't want to walk into that space because it would defile them. Sometimes you get too caught up in religious tradition. 
Stewardesses, you don't have to have a doily on your head. <laughs> Sisters, you can wear open toe shoes. <laughs> you can wear jewelry in the pulpit. <laughs> Since it's woman history, it's okay to wear pants. <laughs> I guarantee you, all the stuff that you grew up in these traditional churches, I guarantee you, Jesus ain't even thinking about it. <laughs> I said, Jesus, Jesus ain't even thinking about some of the crazy stuff that we come up with that we feel makes us more spiritual and makes us more holy. Because what defiles you is not what's coming, uh, what defiles you is what comes out of you because what God has put in you. Do I have a witness in the house? He sees your heart. Do I have a witness? So they don't want to go into this space because they don't want to defile themselves, but yet and still they're trying to convince Pilate to murder Jesus. Verse number 29, so Pilate the governor went out to meet them since he realized they weren't going to come in and ask, what is your charge against this man? And listen, I want you to hear the tone now in verse number 30. We wouldn't have handed him over to you if you weren't a criminal. Why are we going through all these changes? We come to you with this man, put the death sentence on him, rubber stamp it, and that should be it. And then, uh, then take him away and judge him by your own laws, Pilate says. So Pilate is now hitting back. Why are you bringing him to me? Judge him by your own laws. And so the religious leaders are going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs now. They said, we were not expecting to go through all these changes. And then the only, then the religious leaders, only the Romans are permitted to execute someone, the religious leaders replied. This fulfilled Jesus' prediction about the way he would die. Then Pilate went back into the headquarters, called for Jesus to be brought out. Are you the king of the Jews, he asked them. So now Pilate is not accepting what the religious leaders, he actually wants to see Jesus himself. So the religious leaders outside, they're going crazy. They were not expecting to go through all these changes. Anybody here, you weren't expected to go through all the changes you're now going through. You've come out to early morning services. Why have not things changed for me? Truth crushed to the earth will rise again. Hold on a little while longer. These heavy burdens will soon be. God sees your faithfulness. The changes you're going through, God is going to get you through. And if you believe it and hold on a little while longer, your change is going to come. That's what faith is all about. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, and by it, if you hold on to that faith, God's going to bless you because that's what separates us from everybody else. Everybody else crumbles under what they're going through. We have a faith to know that God's going to get us through. And the harder the challenge, the more your faith has to kick in. That's why you want to give yourselves a hand praise for coming out early in the morning. This is going to increase your faith in the name of Jesus. And then moving down to verse 34, Jesus replied, excuse me, verse 33, then Pilate went back into the headquarters, called for Jesus. Are you the king of the Jews? He asked him. Jesus replied, is this your own question? <laughs> Jesus is a bad brother. Or did others tell you about me? Pilate is kind of trying to grab, you're calling yourself a king. Therefore, you are a threat to Rome. But as I look at you beaten and battered, I don't see anything that looks like a king or a revolutionary to me. And Jesus is asking him, are you thinking I'm a king? Do, do, has what I have said openly, have you heard about it? And Pilate is saying, am I a Jew? Do you actually think I care about these issues? Do you think I'm actually concerned about religion? Do you actually think I'm concerned about my soul? Does anybody have friends like that? Do you actually think I'm, you're talking about Jesus? Do you actually think I care about Jesus? I'm trying to get my bills paid. I'm trying to deal with my children. I'm trying to deal with my spouse. I'm trying to deal with my finances. I don't care about this Jesus. Matter of fact, some of you are laughed at because you are believers in Christ. This is, Pilate is being cynical. Pilate is being sarcastic. Do you actually think I care about these spiritual things? That's why in 2024, it's hard to be a Christian. Pastor Joe and I were in a movie in which, in, in the movie, they showed a family going to their grandparents, and the grandparents were very religious, and the theater laughed. The theater laughed. It was mainly white person in the theater. The theater laughed because these persons were believing in Christ. How stupid could they be? How crazy could, we're living in very challenging times where your iPhone becomes your God. The, the iPhone is your truth because what the, you can what? Fact check everything. And if the iPhone checks what you are checking 
and gives the facts of what you want answers to. You believe the iPhone, and the iPhone has nothing about Jesus. And so with this, Pilate is being cynical. Pilate is being sarcastic. And with all of this, Jesus is now, am I a Jew, Pilate retorted? Your own people and their leaders and priests have brought you to me for, for the trial. Why? What have you done? Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. Pilate, you don't have to be afraid of me. If I needed to have a revolution, I would have a thousand soldiers behind me. But I'm here by myself. My kingdom is not of this earth. You don't have to worry about it. My kingdom is heavenly. That's why we see in, they see in black and white, we see in color HD. Your viewpoint of life and living is totally different than the unsaved. And because the unsaved seem to have the majority, the unsaved seem to have the voice of the population, it's hard for you to talk about spiritual things in a very, in a very carnal culture. And that's why it's been hard for you as Christians to hold on to a faith on your job, especially if you're working with unbelievers. Everybody who primarily works with unbelievers on your job or in your space, whether it's school or home, wherever it may be, can you stand to your feet? That you are one of the few believers in the place that you have to go through every day. Can you give the men and women who are standing a hand praise? Because it's hard sometimes. You may take your seats in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this earth. You can't understand it unless you're grounded in the things of faith. And then from this, he keeps on saying um, that my kingdom is not of the world and, and to keep me from being handed over to the Jewish leadership, but my kingdom is not of this world. Pilate said, so you are a king. Jesus responded, you say I'm a king. Actually, I was born and came into the world to testify to the truth. Can you look at someone and say, truth crusts through the earth, you will rise again. We're not talking about your truth. Your truth is temporary. Your truth is based on what side of the bed you get up on. You have one truth today, you have another truth tomorrow, and your truth is not a truth because it switches too much. So Jesus is telling Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. Pilate said, so you are a king. Jesus responded, yes, I am a king. Actually, I was born and came into the world to testify to what? The truth. Whose truth is he talking about? God's truth. What truth do you want? Thank you. Thank you. Why are you looking everywhere else? Why are you looking everywhere else for God, for truth? When God has given you his truth, can you give Reverend Folsom a hand praise? God has given you his truth in the word of God. You've got what the world does not have, and you're looking for what the world does have as if it's going to increase what you already have. Doesn't make any sense. You've got it. You got it. Can you look at someone? You got it. You got it. You got the truth. And the truth is going to set you what? But if you're searching all over for a truth that you already have, like what you have is not enough, it's going to mess you up. And that's why some of you are messed up because you're looking for truth because God has been delayed in answering what you want. But if you hold on a little while longer, the truth of his word is going to come to pass. Do I have a witness in the house? That truth is going to give you peace. That truth is going to give you joy. That truth is going to give you faith and believe that despite what's going to happen, God is going to give, give you an untroubled heart in the midst of a troubled situation. Do I have a witness in the house? Jesus said, uh, my kingdom is not of this world, so you are a king. Who loved, he said, all who love the truth um, recognize that what I say is true. Pilate said, what is truth? Truth crushed to the earth will rise again. Pilate did not rise again because his truth was based on Rome. His truth was based on Caesar. His truth was based on what a politician said. His truth was based on what a system said. His truth was based on not grounded in God. So he was thinking this way one day, and he was a very cruel man. He was a very hurtful man. He was a man that used his power, not from a position of truth, but a position to enhance his own well-being. Those who do not know truth, it's me, myself, and I. Those who do know truth, look at it from the point of view, how can I use this truth to benefit others? They will know us by what? Our love. Because the truth of Christ is that your love will pass all understanding. Do I have a witness in the house? Caesar, Pilate was asking, what is truth? Can you look at someone and say, truth crusts to the earth? 
will rise again. Talk to me, Dr. King. Truth crushed to the earth will rise. I may not get there with you, but we as a people will get to the promised land. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man, for my eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Somebody here today, I want you to look up, for God's glory is coming down. And because you've been faithful over a few things, he's getting ready to make you ruler over many. God says, your, my truth is going to keep you. My truth is going to ground you. My truth is going to bless you. My truth is going to anoint you. My truth is going to get you through whatever you're in. My truth is going to have your finances change. My truth is going to have your family change. My truth is going to bring blessings upon blessings upon blessings. But you've got to have the faith to believe that my truth is the truth that you have to stand on. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All of the ground is sinking stand. Do I have a witness? His oath, his covenant and his blood support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the when he shall come with trumpet sound. Oh may I then be him and found. Just in his righteousness under the Lord. Somebody if you stand on his truth one day even when you breathe your last breath one day when you no longer can walk on this side of Jordan. One day when you have to give up no longer stammering tongue. One day Christ is going to have you come up to glory. And because you stood on the truth of Christ, you're going to hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Just like everybody who came to the altar, your loved one prayerfully heard him say, well done. This earth does not have the final say. There is a truth that there is someplace else and that someplace else is heaven. And do I have anybody that wants to make heaven their home? But you can have a little bit of truth right down here on earth. Do I have a witness in the house? Uh, your weeping may endure for a night, but your joy is getting ready to come in the morning. And if you've got morning joy, can you give the Lord's name the honor, the praise, and the glory? I said, the light shall come back on. The light shall come back on. The light of truth and the light of faith. Can you give a neighbor a holy hug and tell him, truth crushed to the earth. Your faith crushed to the earth. Your hurts crushed to the earth. Your belief crushed to the earth. God is going to restore everything that the canker worm tried to destroy. Do I have a witness in the house today? Truth crushed. And whose truth are you standing on? Come on now, whose truth are you standing on? I said, whose truth are you standing on? When a loved one gets sick, whose truth are you standing on? When things aren't going your way, whose truth are you standing on? When your prayers seem like they're being delayed, whose truth are you standing on? Anybody here today know that tomorrow God's going to see you through. Hallelujah. 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 I know what I'm talking about. Pastor Joe and I had nothing. 1982, 83, we literally had nothing. Could not even provide the family with a Christmas, any kind of Christmas if it had not been for our parents. Had absolutely nothing. We would believe in God for a church in New England. No church was available. We were thinking about going to minister in Africa or to Bermuda. We were just in a position and a place by which nothing was given. And we were called. We were just believing. We just had, kept believing. But my faith began to waver. Anybody ever had your faith begin to waver? God, you called me. How, how, how can you call me and have us go through what we're going through? I mean, it, it, there was, it looked like there was no future, nothing. And then one day I was sitting on the end of the bed and all of a sudden the Thomas Whitfield song, just this was a popular song at the time, hold on, don't you ever let go. Let my Jesus lead you wherever you go. Though the road is rough and the going gets tough, he is that kind of friend. And I don't know what happened, but my faith increased. Sometimes God will speak to you in ways it comes just out of the blue. It was like Thomas Whitfield was singing in my ear. And two days later, Bishop John Hurst Adams called and said, Granger, there's a church in a place called Fort Washington, Maryland. Bishop, I know about the place because I was working with Catholic Charities, and that was one of the areas I was working. Well, there's a church called Ebenezer. We just moved them from Georgetown to Fort Washington. They only have 17 members, but I believe God's going to bless if you decide to take it. I said, Bishop, uh, that's fine. He said, now it only pays $100 a week, and you have a nice parsonage, uh, but uh, if you take it, I believe God's going to bless you. 
We had nothing else. <laughs> it could have been a zero dollars a week. And we came and found 17 faithful leaders of that faithful group with the clays. And from this, this is what God has done. I just if you hold on, if you just believe in that truth, God will make a way. I know it doesn't seem like it at this time because everything seems like it's desolate. But does anyone know that God can water your parched ground? Amen. Please stand all over the church. Can you look at somebody and say, if God's done it for others, he's going to do it for you. Somebody today is where Pastor Joe and I were 40 years ago. But God's getting ready to work it out. I said, God's getting ready to work it out. God's getting ready to work it out. I said, God is getting ready to work it out. God is getting ready to work it out. God is getting ready to work it out. God is getting ready to work it out exceedingly and abundantly beyond what you ever could think or imagine. And if you believe it to be the case, can you hug three people and say, he's working it out. Truth crushed to the earth shall rise again. 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 Hallelujah. 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 The truth of what I've said is because anybody here saved in the name of Jesus. <laughs> aren't, you, aren't you glad you're saved? Have you ever thought about what your life would be if you were not saved? You would be a wretch undone. You'd be like on a ship without a sail. But if you're glad today that you're saved in Jesus' name from the truth of his word and by the power of the Holy Spirit, can you say hallelujah? hallelujah. Can you tap a neighbor real quickly and ask, are you saved? Do you have a church home? We're assuming somebody waking up early in the morning. We're just assuming. Now, Reverend Folsom, Reverend Ware, others are there, pastors, Reverend Martin, they're at other churches. So we're not trying to, but if, please stand all of the church. Anyone this morning need to be saved? Anyone this morning need to be, I, I gotta, please everyone take a seat, praise the Lord. Everyone who's a member of Ebenezer Amy Church in Fort Washington, Maryland, please jump to your feet. <laughs> so focus slick, I ain't gonna sit down and have to jump back. I'm just gonna stay up my knees hurting this morning. <laughs> please ask your neighbor if, you need, if they need a church home. Please ask your neighbor if they need a church home. Pastor Joe and I would love, to, if they say I'm a member of another church, that's fine. But if they need a church home, they've moved to this area, don't have a church home, you just take them by the arm and bring them down. Amen. Everyone who's sitting, you already have a church home. You're glad where you are. Can, you can stand up as well. Can we give the Lord's... Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. What it, praise the Lord. You're a member and this is your... Reverend Folsom, when they say they're friends, I don't go any further, all right? Can we give friend a hand praise? Amen. What is your name, my brother? Antonio. This is Antonio. Can we give Antonio a hand praise? Look what God has done. Minister Miller will pray with you, Antonio. And what is your name, my sister? Denise Jackson. Denise Jackson. Amen. I no longer call you servants. I call you friends. <laughs> Amen. Can you stretch your hands to Antonio this morning? Is there anyone else? Is there anyone? Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for Antonio. We thank you for a friend that loved a friend enough to make sure that he is grounded and rooted in the church of the living God. Thank you for the tremendous blessing that you've given Pastor Joanne and I to pastor the most incredible people in the whole wide world. We thank you for how they've used their, how they have taken your truth and I thank you for how they have changed the world. We thank you for how they've made contributions not only to this community, but on their job places, school places, within their own homes. And we say thank you that we see something great merging through Antonio, that he shall be a part of this mighty move of God that you've called to change the world, turn it upside down for you. So on today, anoint him anew and afresh. We thank you for what you're getting ready to do. We thank you for the new friends that he will now have at Ebenezer. In Jesus' name, we want to say thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Can you give Antonio a hand praise? Minister Miller will get some information from you, Antonio. Friend, if you want to go with Antonio. Okay. <laughs> I'm just checking the level of friendship. <laughs> praise the Lord. Can you give Pastor Joanne a hand praise? Please get your offering in your hand. If God has blessed you to give and be prepared to just place it on the altar. Can you give my honey bunny Jones a hand praise this morning? Victory is mine. Victory is mine. 
Victory today is mine. I told Satan to get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Oh, sing it again. Victory is mine, yeah. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Oh, I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Joy is mine. Joy is mine. Joy is mine. Joy today is mine. I told Satan, Get thee behind, joy today is mine. Oh, peace is mine, peace is mine. Yes, it is, peace is mine. Yes, it is, peace today is mine. Oh, I told him, I told Satan, get thee behind. Today is mine, love is mine, yeah, love is mine, yes it is, love is mine, love today is mine, I told him, I told him, I told him, I told Satan, get thee behind. Love today is my joy, 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 joy is mine. Yes, it is. Joy is mine. Joy today is mine. I told him, I told him, I told him, I told Satan, mm, get thee behind. Joy today is mine. Healing is mine. Healing is mine. Healing is mine. Healing today is mine. I told him, I told him, I told him. I told Satan, get thee behind. Healing today is my victory, 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 victory is my victory is my victory today is my I told Satan get thee behind victory today is my joy is my joy is my joy is my yeah joy is my joy today is mine i told him i told him i told him i told satan get thee behind victory victory today is mine. i'm kurt franklin i just I just say the word. <laughs> Victory is what? <laughs> Hallelujah. Can you give the Lord's name the praise? I thank everybody for coming out. Tomorrow will be a wondrous Wednesday, Thursday, a thirsty Thursday, Friday, a good faithful Friday. Amen. Again, 12 noon at Greater Calvary with Bishop Alfred Owens, co-pastor Susie Owens. That's mainly the jewels be coming to that. We encourage people to come at 7 o'clock at Kingdom Fellowship. My dear brother, Matthew, Reverend Dr. Matthew Watley at Kingdom Fellowship. Also for the seven last words, Reverend uh, uh, Kevin Taylor will represent us at the Georgetown Churches at noontime. It's going to be a wondrous, glorious Resurrection Sunday. Amen. I'm sorry, Saturday, Sanctified Saturday, and then Resurrection Sunday, I'll be doing 6 o'clock. And can you give Pastor Joanne a hand praise? She'll be doing 9 o'clock. We have a wonderful Christmas, Christmas. Easter Resurrection Sunday presentation is going to be a little different worship service with drama and the preach word singing all combined, kind of like what we did for Christmas. Amen. So come on out Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday and be blessed in Jesus' name. We love you so much. Streaming family, I forgot to mention, if you can just put it back on the screen, thank you for your offerings uh, through online and all the different ways that you can give. We love you so much and thank you so much. Can you take someone by the hand as we go to God in the final word of prayer? Ray, I'm so glad to see you this morning. Amen. God bless you. For 
Felicia, once again, so blessed to see you this morning as well. And now may the grace, the love, and the liberation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the fellowship and the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit, may you rest, rule, and abide with these, your precious people, because truth crushed to the earth shall rise again. And we believe it so. In Jesus' name we pray. Can the people of God say amen, amen, and amen. We love you today. If you desire to have a further anointing, uh, please take the first few rows. Uh, can we give Sister Howes a hand praise? Sister Howes, raise your hand. Sister Howes is going to be uh, overseeing our Chris, uh, Resurrection Sunday Easter program. Again, if you desire to be an, uh, anointed, desire to have further ministry, please take the first couple of seats in the, uh, in the front of the church. Amen. We'll be so blessed and honored to do it. God bless you. God bless you. Doing all right this morning? Yes, yes. anointed in the app.
the house of him. Praise amen. Be so kind to close the uh, doors uh, that lead to the North X. Thank you so much. Thank you, Minister Vita. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, those who are either here to uh, be anointed or for those who are going to be catching or praying for those to be anointed, thank you so very, very much. Thank you. Reverend Martin, uh, Reverend Folsom, thank you. So blessed to see you. Well, Reverend Martin was all, all ready for today. He has a, a Black Panther from the voting rights that Stokely Carmichael did way down in Mississippi. And that looks like an original, original shirt. No, it's a remake. A remake, amen. amen. God bless you, God bless you. Uh, I'm gonna ask if you'd be so kind, again, I'm gonna give you a little preview for um, what will be taking place tomorrow. Looking at verse 38 again, what is truth, Pilate asked. It's interesting. Um, then he went out again to the people and told them, he is not guilty of any crime. Pilate saw that there was nothing that Jesus had done or said that was worthy not only of death, but even a crime of itself. So he was willing to let him go free. And, but he realized the crowd was not where he was. So he said, but you have a custom of asking me to release one prisoner each year at Passover. Would you like me to release the king of the Jews? He was just assuming that since the people saw Jesus as the king of the Jews, that the answer would be that this would be the one that they would release. But the, we'll talk about it a little bit tomorrow. But the religious leaders had gotten to the crowd and had influenced them that they did not want Jesus. The same crowd that had called him Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Within really 12 hours, they had completely turned and they shouted back, no, not this man. We want Barabbas. Barabbas, Reverend Martin, was a revolutionary. <laughs> do, I, do I have any revolutionaries in the house? So this is the first man that was clearly indebted to Jesus, so literally his life was spared because Pilate uh, crucified Jesus instead of Barabbas. And he was a revolutionary. <laughs> Do we have any revolutionaries in the house that Jesus died for? Not just revolutionaries in the faith realm, but also revolutionaries for our people, amen? Yeah. We'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, and look at someone and say, I'm so glad he died for me but I'm more happy he got up for me. That's why whatever you are here for, I'm believing in faith that God's going to answer. He died so that you could be uh, forgiven, but he rose again so that you would have power. And the same gifts, same power that Christ has, he's given to his church, the body of Christ. So it's not any individual that does what's being done. It's the Christ using them. And I thank God that his gifts are without repentance. In other words, it's not because the person who's exercising the gifts are so wonderful, so anointed, they're just representing Christ. And it's not just the person who sits on the pulpit. Can you look at someone and say, I can lay hands on the sick as well. I can pray for somebody as well. I don't have to have a reverend in front of my name in order to do it. Is that right, Reverend Martin? Yeah, I can. God has given the body of Christ the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this opportunity for you to exercise the gifts that you've given to all of us 
to be able to see men and women healed, to see men and women delivered, to bring back joy, peace, and power in their lives. Well, whatever the reason that the men and women of God have come and stayed for this afterglow, we're believing it shall come to pass and that you shall give them the desires of their heart and the truth of your word shall be manifested through and in them. And we thank you that the joy and the peace of the Holy Spirit shall reign in them and through them. And now that their prayers have been answered, their lives have been empowered, they're literally going to be revolutionaries for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to ask that everyone who's coming this morning for healing, if you please come to the altar. This is a healing for yourself, not that you're praying for a loved one. We're going to get to that in a second. But this is for persons who actually have a healing need for themselves. You'd be so kind to come to the altar. Amen. You actually have a healing need for yourself. Amen. Anyone else have a healing need? God bless you today. Amen. A healing need for yourself. Please, we'll start right here. Amen. Amen. God bless you today. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Yeah, please come as close this way as you can. Amen. If you can kneel, it'll be all right. I think we have enough catchers. In the room. Okay. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to ask that those who will be catching be so kind to come. Uh, when someone touches your shoulder, that means someone's in back of you to catch you. will be fine to stand at that time. Amen. Praise the Lord. Catchers, get ready. Uh, someone may fall before they're anointed. So I'm going to be asking that you always be kind of conscious of the fact that you uh, don't have to wait for me to get there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. All those at the altar, can you just raise your hand if you're able to? Can you repeat after me? Jesus was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of his peace is upon me. And by his stripes, by the stripes of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I am healed today in Jesus' name. Now put your name to it. Granger is healed today in Jesus' name. Put your name to it. And Granger is healed today in Jesus' name. Put your name to it. This is the final time and say it like you mean it. And by his stripes, Granger is healed today in the name of Jesus. And if you believe it for yourself, it's all right to give the Lord's name, the honor, the praise, and the glory. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask, what is your name again? I apologize. Dorothy Campbell. Sister Campbell, I know she has family. Be able to just stretch your hands this way towards you. Um, Mother, in the name of Jesus, raise your hand, Sister Campbell. We realize there was a multitude of things, but each and every one has been healed today in Jesus' name. Is there anything that's hurting? All the things that you have just lifted up, the Holy Spirit says you're healed today in Jesus' name. And by the stripes of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the healing power of Jesus is upon you today. In Jesus' name, we give the Lord's name the praise. Amen. Uh, Reverend Martin, <laughs> Reverend uh, uh, Marriott, and Reverend uh, Trish, be so kind to come. Reverend Marriott, Reverend Trish. Um, and it's hurting right now. Is it all right to fall back? <laughs> okay. I'm going to, can you show Reverend Marriott where it's hurting? All right. Is it hurting at all on the other side? No, no, sir. All right. Okay. Praise the Lord. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for your holy healing power. We stand on your word that by your stripes, healing has come in the name of Jesus. And we give your name all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. In Jesus' name, we want to say thank you. In Jesus' name, can the people of God say amen, amen. and amen and amen. When she's ready to get up, please let me know, okay? Amen. Reverend uh, Smith. Yes, if you can show Reverend Smith where it is. All right, amen. In the name of Jesus, we're believing you. Does it hurt right now? 
in the name of Jesus. We're believing right now for your supernatural healing. And we stand on your word that by your stripes, healing has come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to take a little walk. Time. The Holy Spirit says it's healed right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, I'm just going to have to just on a walk, all right? Are you feeling any really better? Praise the Lord. You're feeling better? Amen. You sure? Hey, praise the Lord. You can lift up your hands, all right? Can we get the Lord's name to honor the praise and the glory today? Marriott and uh, Reverend Martin, be so kind. We're going to have the father, we're going to have the daughter, the mother, and the Holy Ghost <laughs> to come Hallelujah. today. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, you're feeling it right now. You're feeling it right now. You're feeling it right now. In the name of Jesus, we say thank you for your holy healing power. In Jesus' name, we pray. Somebody can give our God's daughter a hand praise today. Hallelujah. Please let me know when she's ready to get up. Hallelujah. We claim it already done. As soon as Reverend Smith, Reverend Merritt, and Reverend Martin touched that area, it was already done. I said it was already done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 We give the Lord's name the honor, the praise, and the glory. Those who desire to be anointed for whatever reason, please come and start on this side and we'll start going down. Oh, that's beautiful. I haven't seen it. Uh, please go on uh, starting right here. For whatever reason you need to be anointed, please come and just stand right here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Once, once she's ready to get up, you'll be able to kneel if you're able to. I'm going to uh, just believe God for my sister's healing. In the name of Jesus, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do the same. Oh, you already healed. No, 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 no. I'm just going to ask, can you touch your toes? Oh, yes. In the name of Jesus. My goodness. Does it, is it no longer hurting? No, One first time. It got right by the third time. Thank you. That's right. In the name of Jesus, we give the Lord's name, the honor, the praise, and the glory. And this is it. This is it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Boy, you touched the floor that time. <laughs> you can just walk around and praise God if you want to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Reverend Smith and Reverend Mary, Reverend Mark can just give her a hug. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. Praise the Lord. Once someone touches your shoulder, now please stand at that time and that lets you know that someone is standing behind you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My goodness, wonderful. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for this healthy temple. And we give your name, the honor, the praise, and the glory that you will leave this to your sister for everything she needs to be able to live healthy for you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Can you give the Lord's name to pray today? What is your prayer request today? Please raise your hand. He has the cattle on a thousand hills. In other words, he has everything you stand in need of. And we're believing the prayer that you have today. God's answered it. In the name of Jesus. 
It has already come to pass. In Jesus' name we pray. What is your prayer request today? Give this caregiver a hand, praise. Please raise your hands. Her daughter is a part of the exceptional, exceptional children's ministry, exceptional ministry, not children's exceptional ministry. And uh, she needs our prayers today. Amen. In the name of Jesus, for this precious mother who's been such a faithful caregiver, we're believing that by your stripes, her daughter is healed today as she intercedes on behalf. She stands in the gap on behalf of her daughter. And the prayer request that she's lifted up, we're believing that no weapon formed against her shall yes. prosper yes. in the name of Jesus. We want to say Hallelujah. thank you. Come on, Pastor. I'm standing. I'm praying for my coworker, sir. Her name's Marisol. Her son, Brian, was diagnosed with stage four mm -hmm. lymphoma. We thank you for this woman of God that stands as an intercessor for Brian today. And we give the Lord's name, the honor, the praise, and the glory that we're believing that the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much and that Brian is healed today just as you healed her. Brian is healed today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is your prayer? God brought you all the way to Jamaica so that your mother would have the healing power of Jesus Christ upon her. Yes. And we give the Lord's name, the honor, the praise, and the glory that by his stripes, by the stripes of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, your mother is healed today in the name of Jesus. Can we give the Lord's name the praise, the honor, and the glory today? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Reverend Oliver, be so kind to come. Reverend Oliver. Oh, Sister Franklin, be so kind to come. Amen. Reverend Oliver, just raise your hands. Amen. You too have been faithful over a few things and God is even in this stage of your life that God is making you rule over some new things. First of all, he's healing your body in the name of Jesus. And then even now, between now and oh, Pentecost Sunday, God's going to give you new revelations about what it is he still wants you to do. Your time is not yet up. God still has great things that he wants you to do. In the name of Jesus, can we give the Lord's name the praise? And Sister Franklin, please raise your hands. Somewhat similar to Reverend Oliver, even though you've retired from one thing, God wants you to know he has greater things on the way. And uh, your wisdom, what you have been through, what God has taken you through, and now how God is blessing you through, God still has so much more for you to do. And we give the Lord's name the praise. And it's not going to be tiring. It's not going to be something that's going to, uh, but God is going to ease you into it. And uh, whatever it is and wherever it is, God's going to bless you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> bless you to be a blessing to others. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Reverend Oliver. Reverend Jackson, I mean, Sister Jackson and Sister uh, Sunshine, be so kind to come up. This is Sister, real, her real name is Sister Conte. But, uh, and uh, 
River Martin, you'd be so kind to stand in between them. Amen. And just take each other by the hand. Amen. I'm going to ask because I'm going to be anointing Reverend Martin as well. Felicia, uh, Felicia, are you able to come down? Felicia, you able to come down? Thank you. Um, please raise your hands in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, we thank you that for each and every one of you, God is getting ready to do something miraculous with you and for you in these next four days. And we say thank the Lord for what he's getting ready to do. In Jesus' name, we want to say thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. 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 I'll, I'll come to you, Felicia, right? How's your ankle coming, okay? All right. Please take a seat right here. All right. Which ankle is it? Okay. Can you just stretch it for me? In the name of Jesus, we thank you for your holy healing power. We stand on your word for this extraordinarily gifted and blessed young woman that by your stripes total and complete healing has come not only for her knee but we thank you for the blessings that just continue to come in her life and we say thank you and we praise you for the anointing of the holy spirit that's upon her in jesus name we want to say thank you in jesus name we pray amen 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 amen, amen. god bless you god bless you Thank God for everybody this morning, uh, Reverend uh, um, Folsom and Reverend Weir would be so kind. Um, and if you could just um, almost like uh, both of you would be like a referee holding each other's hand up in victory, just like you've won the fight. Amen. Just if you could face me, just like you've won the fight. And at the end of the fight, the, the referee says, is the winner. Is Reverend Folsom, and the winner is Reverend Ware. In this fight, they were not competitors. In this fight, they were complimenting each other. Yeah. That iron does shop in iron in the name of Jesus. And we thank God that in this fight, the enemy was the devil, not each other. And we give God's name all the honor, the praise, and the glory for the battles that you're facing are not yours, but they're his. For it is his house, not your house. It's his place of worship, not your place of worship. And he's going to give you everything you need so that his house become the house of prayer, yes, the house of Amen. power, the house of anointing Amen. that God has called it to be. Can we give the Lord's name the honor, the praise, and the glory for the victory that God has given both to Reverend Ware and to Reverend Folsom in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Reverend Martin and Reverend, Reverend, Martin, Reverend Marriott and Reverend Smith, be so kind to come up. Both of you knew it was coming. <laughs> after, after you saw Reverend Folsom and Reverend Wears, oh boy, <laughs> Plays, take, take each other by the hand, amen. And if both of you can do the same, raise each other's up. We all can get along, AKA Delta, we all can get along, amen. For both of you, similar. And God has given you the victory, not over each other, but he's given you victory in the kingdom of God. Both of you have been blessed with extraordinary gifts and talents, extraordinary gifts and talents, phenomenal gifts and talents. And we thank you that you have used them to God's honor and God's glory. But for both of you, you ain't seen nothing yet. Yes. Eyes have not seen, your ears have not heard, and your mind can't comprehend what God is getting ready to do. But for both of you, in 2024, God has put something in your spirit that allows you to know that greater is coming, that something good is about to happen, something God is about to take place. One, something good is getting ready to happen in your ministries. Something good is getting ready to happen in your personal lives. Something God is getting ready to happen in your ministries. And something God is getting ready to happen in your personal lives. He's doing both things at the same time to complement each other. And as they complement each other, God is giving you the power to see how the two are intertwined. In the name of Jesus. 
We give the Lord's name all the honor, all the praise, and all of the glory. Can we say hallelujah for what God is getting ready to do? Praise the Lord. Reverend Martin, please raise your hands. It was no accident that you wore that uh, shirt today as we commemorate and remember 60 years ago when Malcolm and Martin met one another. At that time, they did not see how closely linked they were. But by 1965, Malcolm was getting closer to Martin because it was just a few months, 10 months, really, 11 months, he was no longer going to be here. And Martin, um, it was within four years, he would no longer be here. But the two of them were able to see a connection, not they, but we are able to see a connection 60 years later that both saw the system was what they needed to fight against. God is getting ready and has re already used you, but it does not compare to how he's getting ready to use you. And now that he has given you a place in a political system, a political kingdom, get ready for God to do even extraordinary things in his kingdom. And as you prepare to have a prayer that you have requested of by the Holy Spirit to be answered, get ready for God to do extraordinarily exceedingly and abundantly beyond what you can think or imagine. It will be beyond what you have thought. It will be beyond what you have prayed for. It will be beyond what you even were thinking of. For God is getting ready to do extraordinary things in your life and in your ministry. In the name of Jesus. From the top of your head to the sole of your feet is already happened. In Jesus' name we pray. Can the people of God say amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. 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 Can we stand up? <laughs> that is incredible. Do you see Minister uh, Vita's shirt? It says, live in the truth. That is incredible. Minister Vita, you got to get a second in the... <laughs> um, during Bible study, when we had it, it would be incredible when Minister Vita would be ministering I would have said something to the person and Minister Vita would switch songs and sing exactly what had been said to the person. Or she'd be singing something to the person. The person would ask, I would ask them what their prayer request was and their prayer request would be exactly the song that Minister Vita was singing. It has been incredible. So I'm really not surprised on the day that we spoke about truth, that the Holy Spirit prayerfully spoke about truth, that you would wear a... Um, a hoodie uh, that was dealing with truth. Please raise your hands one more time. Everyone we've just finished anointing is in ministry. Um, God is getting ready. We call you Minister Vita and been calling you that now for 10, 12 years or so. Uh, get ready, Minister Vita. Get ready, Minister Vita. Get ready, Minister Vita. God is guiding your footsteps. He's bringing light to your path, vision to your soul, my God, and glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Your eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord into your heart, soul, and mind. In the name of Jesus. And the truth this morning is going to set you free once again. In Jesus' name we pray. Free at last to live out all that God is putting in you. Free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty. You are free at last to embrace all that God is doing in you and through you. In Jesus' name. Can we give the Lord's name the praise on this day? God bless you today. God bless you. My brother in security, please be so kind to come. I'll pray for him. Um, Wilma Rudolph, be so kind to come. <laughs> Amen. God bless you, Minister Vita. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. How are you?
I just said that Minister Vita would sing songs that would be directly related to what people needed to hear. That song that Minister Vita is singing right now, that last verse, saved and sanctified, Holy Ghost filled and fire baptized, running for my life. Yes, Hallelujah. God. Can you give this man of God a hand praise? Thank you, Minister Vita. <laughs> I didn't mean to put you to work <laughs> this morning. Amen. Can you take someone by the hand and just let them know that you love them today? My sister, I guess this is going to be. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. My sister right here, God is getting ready to use you in ministry as well. Can you just, my sister, can you tell my sister here, what is your name? Monique. 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 And what is your name? Can you tell Monique, can you tell Cynthia what your prayer request is? And Cynthia, can you pray for Monique? And we're believing God's going to use you to be an instrument in answering Monique's prayer. And even while I'm giving the benediction, it'll be fine for you to be talking to one another, all right? Amen. Praise the Lord. Can see everybody get close enough to be holding somebody's hand today in Jesus' name? Amen. Praise the Lord. Can you get close to somebody to hold somebody's hand? Preachers, you'll be fine that you all hold each other's hands in Jesus' name. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Please take someone by the hand, amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Good God, look at all the preachers in Jesus' name. You might as well, to the left, to the left, Minister Vita, to the left. No, 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 Reverend Martin and Reverend Minister Vita, to the left, to the left. Is, is that left? I'm sorry, Reverend Marriott. My goodness, look at all the preachers here this morning. My goodness. Praise the Lord, my goodness, amen, 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 amen. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for what you've done today on this triumphant Tuesday. And we're believing the truth of your triumphancy is going to be manifest in all of our lives and ministries. If you claim it so, we believe it done. And everything that you've said today, we believe it's a truth that will set us free. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. We love you today. Be blessed in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you, Reverend, Reverend. Thank you, Brother Scott. Thank you, Felicia. My brother, Reverend Scott. Brother Scott. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Charlie, so much. Uh, is Belinda here today? Belinda, thank you. Is uh, Renee here today? Renee, thank you so much. Anybody else's name? Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Belinda and Renee. Thank you.